right, good morning. It's time for another coding stream. There we go. Uh, hmm. I guess my primary monitor changed again. Well, whatever. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, what's the agenda for today? I think sip of coffee first. Um, turn that music down a little bit more. There we go. Uh, so fixing the issue 10, <laughs> what, what I've been trying to get around to fixing for the last couple of streams. Um, and uh, then I think once this is working, uh, assuming there's time today, probably switching back to working on um, Daily Jewel, the calorie counting uh, web app would be good. So today, so for now, <laughs> um, I think one, uh, I've switched back to VS Code, as you can see. Uh, or switch to, because I didn't start in VS Code in this project for, um, actually, I think probably at the time I originally wrote this crate, I was using VS, uh, using, uh, Vim, not even NeoVim, but, uh, that was a long time ago. Um, and yeah, I, I, Played around a little bit more with NeoVim in the setup this morning to try to figure out some things like being able to uh, run a test in line like this, you know, by just clicking a thing. Because there's a thing in NeoVim for that, but uh, I just couldn't get it to work. And I was like, do I really want to mess with this more today? N not really. So, um, yeah. So the, let's, let's go full screen here. Is this? Go a little bit bigger. That might be good. Okay. So uh, at issue right now is this test case here. So if I run this, you can see it fails. And uh, the issue, as I understand it, is fundamentally oh breakpoint there for some for some reason, is that what we should be doing is we should be changing, we should be padding out the matrix. So all of our existing test cases are square, use square matrices, or they just happen to work. <laughs> um, and so we have an example now of a rectangular matrix that does not work. And the issue is that what we really need to do to reliably find the minimal solution is we need to add essentially an additional row of data with uh, maximal weighted edges so that those are not preferred so the algorithm can properly proceed. Now, the issue that I've been having is that, uh, so as I recall, um, the way the solver function is implemented, it's taking this generic T that has some traits, right? And a size. And the purpose of this was just to make it so that the whoever is using this crate can essentially implement our linear assignment problem trait for whatever data structure they're using. Um, and that's all well and good, but it's made it difficult to update the solver. And what I would need to do here is add additional traits that are compatible with the matrix from the uh, line, the um, uh, in algebra crate. Uh, and I don't really want to do that. So, hey, Modprog, how's it going? 
Welcome to the stream. Some great emotes there. <laughs> oh, that's that's cute. The, the the slash emote is kind of a uh, yeah, like a. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> How's your morning been going? Or, uh, you're you're in Europe, right? Your your afternoon, evening. What time is it? Yeah, evening. <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> so, I think what I want to do is instead abandon um, having this kind of generic thing. And instead, I'm just going to implement Solver for the Inalgebra Matrix um, instead. Went for a run, relaxed a bit, working on one of your crates. Nice! Yeah, I should, uh, I should get some... <laughs> I should do that as well. I should do some exercising, but uh... mm. yeah. Anyway, writing documentation for a new feature. Oh boy. Uh, I documentation is great when it's done right. Uh, speaking of which, uh, what here what am I going to have to update? Um, I don't really actually talk about the specifics of the data here. Of the... Uh, there we go. At least I have Copilot here to <laughs> finish the thought for me. Okay, so I think a couple of things. One... I don't think we were going to need this struct anymore. And in fact, we are probably not going to need, I'll, I'll leave this stuff, but I, I don't think we're gonna need any of that. Um, so this is gonna be, I think it, one of the things that this is, that, hmm, interesting. Do we modify, sure, yeah, we do, we do modify the matrix in place, right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to continue to do that. Let me just collapse down some of these things so it's a little bit easier to navigate around. Or I can remember there is a an outline. I, I never use this feature in VS Code, but I'm, I'm going to use it today. Um, so instead of being a mute T, this is going to be um, something like a matrix. Yeah, a type T. So I think T represents the, the type of the, uh, the scholar. Yeah. And... And then I think we're, yeah, we should, we shouldn't need size any longer because we'll be able to get the size from the matrix. Now maybe we can get away with this and then, hmm. So T colon colon output is a weight the return type after indexing. Okay. So index mute of edge. I don't know. If that is going to make sense. No, that doesn't make sense, right? Because T is the type of the, the scholar, so scalar. Yeah, scalar. Um, whereas before T was like our way of indexing into the the matrix. So I don't think um, 
Is this just a... A wait? And then there's no tea here. And then we have nowhere. Does that make sense? Does the weight trait zero and add and subtract and it has no order? It's ordinal? I think that might be a compatible set of traits. Now, do we use edge? Yeah, we do for hash set. So we... Yeah, UV. Okay, I think that's good. <laughs> and I guess the proof will be in the pudding once we get there. But first, um, all of the size stuff has to change. So how do we get the size of the columns? Now it's interesting here. Debug search size columns greater than or equal to size rows. Okay, so this this bit here <laughs> is explains why I'm using the number of columns because there will be more columns, or at least as many columns as there are rows. Um, Do I want to... I think, I think for now I'm just going to replace this like this, and then matrix in rows, like so. And I wonder, do we have a... Um, a method on here that will do what I'm doing here, finding the minimal dimension. I'm just gonna look through briefly. I wonder what imin does. Oh, it's not scrollable. Okay. Cap computes the index of the vector component with the smallest value. No, it's not. Not what I want. I think I'll just, uh, I'll keep using this construction here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and replace every instance of size.columns with this. And... So we're just getting rid of the use of size. Um, at some point, I will probably add something to just save the columns and rows, maybe. Uh, maybe not. I do have actually a benchmark uh, tool here for this, so we can actually measure performance. <laughs> um, so I think I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm not going to worry so much about wor worrying about what is uh, efficient um, in terms of like oh should we save things and reuse or just call this multiple times because I don't really know what this does under the hood I don't really have a strong grasp of Rust and kind of the underlying compilation like what it may be doing. Um, in terms of how it's generating the, the actual uh, uh, instructions that are doing things. So I'm just going to refrain from trying to outthink it and we'll, we'll just take things uh, in a kind of naive way and then go from there. Um, so 
Okay, there we go. I've saved, now I have errors. So, um, I don't need to pass size arounds anymore. So that goes. All of all the stuff passing size around can go because if, um, oh, here we go. So matrix, uh, we get complaints. We're missing things, I think. Let's, let's use a D matrix. I think it's a D matrix. What's this complaint about in algebra? Um, I guess we need an extern. Interesting. Wait, how? Hmm. Unresolved import in algebra, use of unclear crate or module in algebra. What does it mean? Also, want to check to see if this is a an actual problem or something that's down to VS code not being configured correctly okay unresolved imp oh right so um, in our cargo we previously had where is it now? Oh, there it is so in algebra used to be a dev dependency And that is, that's being changed. Okay, cool. That, that's why that happened. So before we were just using an algebra for the tests and we just had a generic type thing um, for, for this. So add time keyword before this trait. Trait weight cannot be made into an object, cannot be made Uh, oh, right, right, right. So what we need, we actually do need T here, where T uh, line, <laughs> hold on, how was this before? Colon and then the trait. So we want to say T has the straight weight, and that's how we can use T. Uh, I believe that is going to represent the thing that I was trying to represent with the the invalid syntax. We will see. We will see. Okay. So um, I'll have to okay. size goes away in all the places. Um, our types are going to have to change as well. Won't that be fun? So this is complaining because, right. I'm gonna take something like this and we wanna do that. And then we're going to say the T is a weight. And there should be a comma there. size goes away. In fact, honestly, let's just, where am I referring to size? Let's remove all of those places. 
matrix size is no more. I think is this was kind of like a convenience thing to print out the contents of the matrix. Um, it's actually much easier to output the contents of uh, the actual in algebra matrix, so we don't need that. Let's keep looking for size. Now, I think on the one hand, even if I were to go back and change this or overlay or do something again to make this more generic and kind of make this able to be uh, implemented like this. I still don't think we would need size. We'd probably just want to include traits in the on the on for that type that this solver is taking to provide the, the information on the size of the matrix. Um, so I think this is fine, probably. I, I kind of liked the idea of being able to have this be generic and not be really specific, like not tie this directly to the in algebra crate. Um, but I'm just not willing, uh, <laughs> maybe not strictly able even right now to be able to make this generic and also do the things that I need to do next in order to fix the issue at hand. So ultimately what we're trying to do um, is we're going to need to resize the matrix to add uh, additional rows. We already, we're already asserting that the number of columns is greater than or equal to the number of rows. So what we want to do is we want to be, blah, 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 blah. we want to manipulate the matrix so that these are actually equal. And then at the end, we'll pull out any extra stars, any extra edges that relate to those fake uh, rows. Um, and having, so because we need to have to reliable, my understanding <laughs> of this algorithm that I haven't worked on in a number of years, uh, is that to reliably get the correct results, we need a square matrix. All right, let's keep fixing problems. So this is, this is a lifetime and it has something to do with <laughs> the borrow checker. And that's about all I remember about that. But um, I believe what I wanna do here is this and then that. All right, that makes it happy. So I'm hoping that essentially I should be able to address all of the complaints and hopefully that means I have <laughs> properly updated everything. We'll see if that's true. Um, okay, I think the this is correct-ish. Although I think it's just T now. And T is a, has a trait of weight. I don't like that I have to save for the uh, things to get uh, checked again, but uh, what are you going to do? All right, so D matrix T, where T is, has a trait of weight. Good. Um, Should still be T there. Good. 
good. We can get at that zero. So, the, um, still a little generic, right? Because we are, we have this, this weight, uh, trait that kind of represents the idea of a numeric value, but we're not asserting a lot of detail about what this is other than we can compare values because it has that ORD trait. Like if we look at weight here, right? Um, so the way I'm reading this is that we are combining these traits together to define this weight trait. So it has a zero. It has an add operation. It can be added with things like itself. It can be subtracted with things like itself is how I'm reading this. And it results in the same self so another another weight uh a word is a trait for types that form a total order i don't know actually so there is a difference between a total and partial order um And right now, I'm not sure if we strictly need the total ordering versus partial ordering for this algorithm. And then copy and debug are useful for um, copying the values <laughs> and debugging, uh, essentially. I feel like things are coming back to me as I'm, I'm going through this code again, which is good. Um, All right, cool. So all the errors are fixed. It's a good sign. I, uh, we don't need index anymore. We're still using index mute somewhere. Are we? Find smallest vector. Oh, I had not updated this, which is interesting. Does that matrix of type T huh where T is a index mute of edge apparently this still works is compatible with uh, the types in, in play. All right, maybe. I'm just gonna leave it. What's uh? Function defined here. Warning, there's potential overflow. Yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the docs, it's literally what I have right above it. I'm just trying to figure out why these little three dots are here. Ah, okay, this is complaining about stuff in other files. So, um. So I think instead of defining this trait, and implementing this, I think what I want to do is uh, what do I want to do here? I want to call Lungress. Just want to do that, right? So there's a bit of logic here that we're doing. The clone thing I don't think is necessary. That was. 
Oh, I get it. So this is how we, so the, the crate itself mutates the matrix in place. The wrapper that I wrote for the tests, then hide that. Um, I don't think that matters. solver, right? Can we just call that? There. Yeah, but test matrix is... Yeah, it needs a mutable reference. Uh, immutable though, right. So that's what we need to do here. Um, I think I think we do need to do, so this transposition and if we did transpose it, changing around the the U's and V's, the BV's and U's, or vice versa, um, that needs to happen in this this function, right? And then this goes away. In other words, instead of asserting that that's true, we're gonna change it to actually make that true. Um, instead of cheating and making essentially the client do it. Now, Do I care of them making a copy? I think not. I think I'm just gonna go with the assumption that we're going to potentially destructively mutate the provided matrix. Um, and should there be a need to do something else, then either the client can do that or we can make a wrapper or something. So. Uh, does self transpose mutate? Well, it's not self anymore. It'll just be matrix to transpose. I'm just gonna do this. Transpose is self. Did you mean to use transpose mute? Transposes the square matrix self in place. What do you mean by square matrix? What if it's not square? In fact, we are explicitly only interested in doing that. Okay, so it can't transpose non-square matrices in place. Cool. So. doesn't like that. If and else have incompatible types. Uh, expected. Uh, right, this is, how do I, how do I write this? Is this return? Hmm. Hey, hey, I did it. Maybe semicolon. All right, and then this is this, and then at the end we have to clean up the result. And I broke some things too. 
because why not? Okay, so... Mute T matrix T is what the type is that this accepts, and found struct matrix. Uh, right, because... Because what? T matrix. T? No, you don't like that. Uh, expected struct. Or wait. Infrasand mute. That doesn't make this other stuff happy. I don't get it. Okay. I'm going to figure it out eventually. Okay. See, this look cl looks close to what I want. <laughs> Am I... Yeah, if and else have incompatible types. Found this. If you tell me Let's see it, it looks like maybe this is the right thing but it doesn't like that um Okay, I think I think I see So we're getting a mutable reference to the transpose so like a new piece of data, right? And I think it's unclear what the lifetime of this is supposed to be. So the borrow checker is complaining. I wonder, you know, we have this fancy copilot. Unrecognized language. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Um. T plus static? Is that a thing? That's not a thing. How do I, um. How would I do that? I have an example of that kind of syntax somewhere. We saw it earlier. Oh yeah, after the ampersand. How do you feel about that? Consider introducing lifetime A here, label undeclared lifetime. Um, I'm gonna probably have to go read some documentation. Doesn't like that. Uh, bor borrow expressions cannot be annotated with lifetimes. Okay, so is it... Lifetime may not live long enough. Type annotation requires that one must, must outlive static. Okay, line. Ah. I see. Consider introducing lifetime here. 
Sure. Okay. So it's time. Rust lifetimes. How do you work? So a lifetime, let me make this bigger. There we go. A lifetime is a construct of the compiler. It's borrow checker. Um, used to ensure all borrows are valid. It'd be really great is if every documentation website had a thing where you, when you selected a word, or a phrase, <laughs> you'd be like, submit, uh, you know, report typo. Anyway, uh, our balls are valid. Specifically, a variable's lifetime begins when it's created and ends when it's destroyed. While lifetimes and scopes are often referred together, they're not the same. Take, for example, the case where we borrow a variable via this. So, borrowing. It's gonna complain about that. But what if we did this? So it doesn't like that. Um, right. Interesting. So there's a few different things here, but essentially, right, because Solver is essentially borrowing. What's up with T? Huh, anyway. Um, we are essentially borrowing the matrix when Solver is called. So we are like owning temporarily. That's what borrowing is, I guess. Um, that matrix. And then we want either matrix to be matrix, which should be fine, right? The type of matrix here, this is the same type. Like we should be able to say that, uh, oh, there's not actually a colon there. Now there is. Right, and now it's just transpose it's wrong. So I'm pretty sure all this, the rest of this stuff is right, right? We want to keep matrix having the same type of initially had. So if we don't need to transpose everything like this, this is a no op essentially. If we do need to transpose, then the result of this should be the same type. So we have a, um, a borrowed reference to a mutable D matrix, right? And you might think, oh, I'll just do this. Um, variable does not need to be mutable is an interesting statement. Okay. Remember type T may not live long enough so that the type T will meet its required lifetime bounds. The type T may not live long enough? What does that mean? Method structs traits. Annotation of lifetimes and trait methods. Okay, structs, methods, function, explicit annotation. Huh. Rust type lifetimes?
was this similar <laughs> there we go okay and then um once you cross the function boundary you need to start talking about lifetimes lifetimes are annotated with an apostrophe um References to outlive reference. Limits of lifetimes. Hold on, let's do this. So what is the The parameter type T may not live long enough. Error 0310. Okay, rest. Okay. Static annotation means something different. A value of its type does not contain any short lived references. Type lifetime always be static. How can I type disappear from a program? Is kind of <laughs> what I was wondering about. Um, okay, can we did that do anything? That did something. <laughs> um, there's one less problem. So this creates a temporary value which is freed while still in use. And that sort of makes sense, that, like there's a scope here. So So previously when I tried to add use a lifetime um, it said something about introducing the lifetime. Um, that's not a thing, is it? Help remove the lifetime annotation. Borrow expressions can be annotated with lifetimes. Okay, cool. Can we, we can't do this. Can we do this? No, can we do this? No. Okay, what can we do here to make this work? Expected this, but found this. Try removing the method call. <laughs> Uh, that, that's very helpful. Uh, yeah, we could we could definitely remove the method call and this would be fine. Uh, Copilot suggesting transpose mute, that's not gonna work. Semicolon shouldn't be there either. Um, because it modifies the receiver in place. It is the wrong thing. Uh, what did I do? I see. Wait, 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 wait. Um, oh, well that breaks other things, but <laughs> now they're the same type. We just dereference that. Now the problem is that it's supposed to be mutable, so I think I just need to then explicitly do this. Okay. Uh, this is fun. Is this that? Do I even need the mutable reference there? No. Cool. Cool. 
Okay, that actually slightly simplifies a couple of things. Cannot mutate immutable variable matrix. Cannot borrow matrix as mutable as it's not declared as mutable. Cannot borrow as mutable. It is mutable. Ah, it would be if I said mute. Aha. Cannot move out of star matrix, which is behind a mutable reference. Move occurs because star matrix has type uh, thing, which does not implement copy. I don't want to actually copy it. Um, okay. Well, for a second, I thought I was <laughs> uh, going to solve the problem, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have wanted to work either. I guess I could do, is it clone? That solves all the problems, right? I don't really want to do that. On the other hand, now, do I, I don't even need a mutable reference. Right, so now I have been forced <laughs> by my lack of ability to manipulate Rust to um, do the thing I said I didn't necessarily want to do, which is have this make a copy of the uh, supplied value, the supplied matrix. But that's fine, ish. Um, so anyway, Moving right along, we can get rid of all that. Um, we don't need to pass a mutable reference to the test matrix anymore. We don't need to use this. Uh, the only thing we need to do is update all of the lines that use test matrix .monkres to instead use linear assignment solver. And then we can get rid of those extra uses. And right. A couple other places where we had different syntax. Update those. All right, now we have new problems. Cannot borrow, uh, borrow of move value, test matrix. Value moves here. Huh. Okay. So do I need to Pass a reference then. That doesn't break that. Does that help here? Consider borrowing here. Okay, I think. Okay. We'll see if I do this, if that will fix all of the problems or add new problems. I look forward to seeing the death of all the changes at the end of this. saying that this does not need to be mutable. Okay. It was the only one that was, apparently. Uh, maybe I was... Maybe I did that today. I don't remember. But this is all... <laughs> fine. Let's run all the tests. Uh, one test should still fail. Yes. 11 pass, one fail. Awesome. It's really great. All right, uh, I guess I can update the um, the benchmark as well. Um, that's fun. It does basically the same thing, just slightly differently. We can get rid of all of this though. And um, right. 
Right. And then we can get rid of those uses. Um, do we? How is one supposed to run the, um, Criterion benchmark stuff? Let's find out. Cargo help. Bench, cargo bench. Now it would be good if I could uh, compare this versus um, mm, before. See if this is how much worse this is, if at all. And in fact, I, I think I can. So I, I'm going to do that. Once we're done compiling. Well, last drop of coffee. And it's gone. Okay. Warming up. It has been at least four years, if not longer, since I've run this. Time. Two... 0.1287 milliseconds. Is that min, median, max? I don't remember. Let's do this. I'm going to open a new terminal. I'm going to commit uh, everything I have so far. Work and progress on refactor. Uh, I'll go ahead and push that up. And then once that's done, I'll check out develop. Uh, confusion. Oh, we don't. We don't have a develop. We have a main. That makes sense. Cargo clean. Cargo bench. Now, I think that the test harness itself was cloning the values anyway. So I think effectively this doesn't do anything different from the, like the, the changes I've just implemented on stream are not all that different from uh, what was happening via the test harness. I feel like there's some unnecessary cloning, copying, stuff going on that we don't need um, but this is probably the same thinking about it a little bit now so or or worse <laughs> uh, so Rust Criterion User Guide ba, 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 ba. Command Line Output. So, how do we read this? Confidence interval over the measured per iteration time for the benchmark. Left and right values show the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval. Center value shows the best estimate of time taken for each iteration. Okay. What does best estimate actually mean? I don't honestly think it really matters. <laughs> let's just take, as long as these numbers aren't wildly divergent from the one in the middle, let's just focus on the one in the middle. Uh, 2.6 milliseconds versus 2.14. Um, All 
Are we only doing 100 measurements? Interesting. I think that might not be enough considering the size of the matrices that the benchmark is doing. It's doing a uh, 100 by 100. So a 10,000 um, values that are all random, random values. So it's trying to match up 100 uh, edges to 100 other edges and evaluating all those weights and evaluating those 10,000 values in on the order of what? In cube time? About two milliseconds. Probably could be faster. Um, I mean, on the other hand, so like the clone um, is only happening once on initialization, so it's just like a constant factor in the operation of this. Okie dokie. Um, so all of this was not really about refactoring the uh, the interface for the, the solver. This was really about making it so that we can um, normalize the matrix. Now I think really to do this properly, what I need to do is I need to go over and look at the C++ version of this, make sure I'm doing this right. the algorithm is in the header file. That makes sense. Um, somewhere. Minimize, replace infinites. Am I doing something like this in the uh, in the code? I don't have a replace infinite um, function here. I don't know that that's a use case that I really covered in this version of the uh, library. Um, if the input matrix isn't square, make it square. Fill the empty values with the largest value present in the matrix. Is this... So the reason I'm transposing I wonder if that's even necessary, right? So I'm transposing to ensure that the number of columns is greater than or equal to the number of rows. But if we always turn this into a square matrix, then this becomes unnecessary, right? Um, what was I thinking? <laughs> Uh, well, whatever the case, it seems like this is introducing problems. So um, this is going to go away. And uh, what I'm going to say is we're going to do this. If matrix dot, I don't suppose you have a, hey, there's a is square. Awesome. If it's not square, we're going to make it square. Now, let's take a look at this code that uh, Copilot has given, given me. Uh, let max be Matrix iter fold zero. So we're accumulating over, just looking for the max value. Okay, I believe that that could work. Although I wonder, well, let's take it really quick. I wonder if there is a matrix dot max. <laughs> All right, let max. B 
be that. I don't. We could probably just use it when we're ready for it. So we don't need that. Awesome. Uh, let's turn on word wrapping and get rid of the side. There we go. Um, okay. So then it makes a new matrix. It makes a new matrix that has, so the from element, is that columns and rows? Oh, I see. Um, no. Let's do this. Let uh, min size. Wait, are we are we doing snake case here? Uh, yeah. Oops. Min size equals. Um, Min, yeah. Oh wait, no, no, no. Max, max. Uh, length, right? Because we want the matrix to be like if it's n by m, and m, m and n are not equal, then we want to make a new matrix that's square by taking the largest value of n and m and making it that size in both directions, right? So then this new matrix would become max length by max length. And apparently this code that we've been supplied will, oh, actually I kind of like this. This is interesting. So we make a new matrix. Uh, we set all the values to be max. And then I don't know that there is a set block. Um, here. So we could do new matrix dot. I wonder if there is actually a method to copy into it from a different matrix of a different size. Copy from fills this matrix with the constants of the other one. Both must have the same shape. So I don't think that'll work. I wonder if that's actually true. Um, matrix, like, okay. yeah, that, that method doesn't exist, so that would be pointless. Okay, let's look at copy from. So what does copy from do? Copy from takes R2, C2, SB, and So it takes other values for size, but it says same number of rows, same number of columns. Okay. TR copy from, is there, is there a method that would allow us to copy from a smaller matrix? I'm gonna guess no. Yes, the shape is the size, the dimension. So um, that's not gonna work. Uh, I joined, copy from, oh, we've looped. Okay, so that. Um. Yeah, this is not gonna happen. We're gonna need to do something else. Yeah, the stars. To do, remove, which is, yeah. Um, right, so how do I get the maximum value of, uh, of two things? Oh, CMP, yeah, I saw, I saw a min down below. Si MD value is not implemented for T. Interesting. Returns the component with the largest value. 
where T is SIMD partial order. Lane-wise generalization of the standard partial order for SIMD values. Interesting. Huh. Well, that is a choice. So did that, I wonder if I can just, how much does this break? Hold on, let's, uh, yeah, with someone import from in algebra. All right, what does that break? Hey, yeah, it doesn't know how to do that. Great, so I can't do that. So can't use max unless I can somehow convert that value. So this uses SIMD max. Okay. Uh huh. I really would like to use matrix that max. That's that's what I'm after here. I don't see how to do that in a way that will make this happy. parentheses here. Further restricting this bound. The trait bound T is not satisfied. The trait send value is not implemented for T. I mean, I get why it's like this. But um, because it's using this uh, single instruction multiple data operation, which should be more efficient. Um, but now it's leaking. Like, okay, cool. It's I know it's this, this this value, but why do I care, right? Um, why should I have to care?
this max? Is there some way to get... Ah. Ah. Okay. to clamp to owned max what does to own to? creates own data from borrowed data usually by cloning now if I did that sure 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 interesting Oh, this is not about what we're putting, like getting the thing out. This is about the fact that in order to use max, the value inside of the matrix has to implement this, um, has to have this trait. What is that? That's even more annoying. Can we just like Is it that one? That's not a thing, is it? Okay. Uh let's see. Let's import the other one. And this can pl uh let's see, can we add this? Okay. What does that break? Everything. Cannot borrow matrix as mutable as not declared as mutable. Not mutable. What did I do? be doing something that or was it hold on let me just comment comment this section out is it something I'm doing in here that's making the compiler think that or did literally changing this make this not work anymore If I put this back, cannot mutate immutable variable matrix. How do you mean? Cannot borrow matrix as mutable is not declared as mutable. Not mutable. Cannot borrow as mutable. Yeah, try. Okay. It's just not happy. Consider changing this to be mutable. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Uh, mute matrix. Okay, that makes it happy again for some reason. Um, so it stopped being a referent. Okay. And then all of this stuff broke. He says, can I, can I make it a mutable reference again? Yeah, except now this is unhappy. All right, so now we can just pass in matrix, right? Or not mutable. Hmm. 
No. What's the what's the complaint here? Expect immutable reference, found reference. Okay, so it should be this. Cannot borrow as mutable. Interesting. Why not? Cannot borrow is immutable. Cannot borrow data in a infrasand reference as mutable. This this was working. I mean, I did remove some things, but I think really the only thing that changed was I added this trait. sized so I think that changed right because matrix has a bunch of T's in it right so rust knows that and so the the traits for the matrix have changed um, Cannot borrow data and this as mutable. Okay, internet, tell me what I'm doing wrong here. Oh, so bright. helpful honestly but um, so at some point I had something like this um, I, and I think that's also wrong oh, okay Let's look at reduce edges. So reduce edges is mutating the matrix, right? Yeah, subtract from matrix. Why are we returning? Yeah, that's fine. Although, is it? I mean, potentially this is a little bit clearer. If we say matrix equals that. Still doesn't like that. Cannot borrow data in a reference as mutable. Label cannot borrow as Cannot borrow is immutable. Why not? Okay. So I'm going to stop banging my head against the wall here. And uh, I am going to keep this because I think this, this is helpful to remind me what's going on here in terms of we're modifying the matrix and then we'll the assigning it back to the a, a new label called matrix doesn't change anything about what's actually going on here but syntactically i think this makes it clear what's happening um so what have i changed so far i think the main thing i want to do is i'm going to give up on this um SMD stuff and that yeah ok 
Okay, what's different now? Uh, right, the solver itself. I had to add that mutable to. What else changed? That was the main thing, right? And then mutable reference. Cannot borrow a mutable ma variable ma matrix. Was it just like this? No. Was it just like this? Nope. What was, what was this before? No, it was at mute. Okay, cool. Maybe I can't do this? Interesting. All right, so... Right. Part of this was the fact that in the previous version of this from like 20 minutes ago, <laughs> I was creating a new matrix label down here. I see. I think I see. Types differ in visibility. Yeah. I mean, I should have something like this, but it's not happy with that either. I guess I can't give. This. Into reduce edges. Nor can I do that same thing and adjust weights. It's unfortunate. What can I do here? How can I take the thing that I am borrowing, this mutable reference to the matrix, and allow reduce edges to borrow it? and return it to this function. And then do the same thing down here. Why, why can't I do that? I do kind of, um, looking back at working on the solution for not being a square metric matrix, I kind of like the idea of essentially like restarting the solver with the square matrix and then returning whatever it returns. Kind of a shade of recursion here, though not really. We're only doing it like one level, unless something is wrong, but uh, I kind of like it. Um, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to work on this even though other things are broken, and uh, yeah. So we can't use the thing that I was originally gonna do. I wonder is is the code here going to work? I think so. It's it's not gonna be as fast as some SIMD thingy. Um, it doesn't need to be immutable. It says interesting from element. Okay, right. So we are able to make uh, a matrix. And we'll use max and we we'll use max length. But the issue is now we need to copy. Copy values from the old matrix into the new matrix. And this works, right? Except it needs to be mutable now. <laughs> there we go. Um, 
Interesting. So now, oh, I was gonna say, now this is not a problem, but it still is. So, Copilot doesn't know how to do Rust, so it's not gonna help us, unfortunately. Um, oh, what can be done? What does reduce edges do, right? It does modify the matrix. What if... No, I really dislike the idea of like making a copy of the matrix. Um... Sorry, my, my brain is distracted thinking about like closure and immutable data structures and stuff. But anyway, um, what if I'm not sure why exactly this is like this. What if we just get rid of the return type and the lifetime annotation and we just don't return anything? Is void not the... Uh... Okay, I think it's that. Does that represent like a, a unit return? Um, that doesn't make this any happier. Cannot borrow data. Can I, can I just, nope, that does not work, right? Because it's the wrong type. Expected mutable reference. Found reference. So, Mutable references, they can be created from mute variables, it must be unique, no other variables can have a mutable reference, nor a shared reference. So here's taking a mutable reference as an argument. Uh, mutable raw pointers work much like mutable references with the added possibility of not pointing to a valid object, the center is star mute type. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, this does need to be mutable. Find smallest vector it does not need a mutable. It just needs a reference. Subtract from matrix does need a mutable reference. Can we can we give it that? So far so good. Uh, this yeah this needs a mutable reference. Doesn't like it though. Cannot mutate immutable variable matrix. Okay. Uh, this can be mute matrix. So far, so good. And then found reference. So then this needs to be this. Nope, still doesn't like it. Cannot move out of this, which is behind a shared reference. Move occurs because star matrix has type matrix, which does not implement copy trait. Right. Okay, if I were to change this. Doesn't like that. Expected this. Found this. Okay. 
Okay. It's happy with that. Oh, it was happy with that until I added the second one. Right, and this is why there was a um, a lifetime on this. Type alias takes zero lifetime arguments. Okay, that's that's nice. Uh huh. So, uh, what did this look like originally? Oh, after the ampersand, right? Do we do the same thing here? Does that make this work? How does anything work? Um, huh. What is the difference between immutable matrix reference, like having this, versus having it like this? What is the difference in meaning? Uh, what is this? No, I don't. Um, something. Something is referencing that. Oh, probably this error up here. And now we're back where we started. <laughs> Cannot borrow data in a reference as mutable. Cannot borrow as mutable. Is this the thing I already Googled? I guess I'm just gonna try the same thing again. Um, cannot borrow a thing, cannot borrow data as a thing thing as, as mutable. You're too bright, Stack Overflow. You're too bright. related to what I'm searching for. So, I like to borrow checking in Rust. I really do. I just, I don't understand the nature of the objection here. as it is behind a reference. Matrix is a reference. So the data it refers to cannot be borrowed as mutable. So the data it refers to cannot be borrowed as mutable. Okay. Consider changing this to be a mutable reference. Removing at mute here. Oh, hey, look, all, all of this stuff is fixed now. 
Tests are broken because I just changed the API, but that's fine. Uh, expected at mute found reference. So then I just need to add mute here. Is that the deal? With the space? Nope, doesn't like that. Can I? All right. So this needs to be mutable. Needed to be mutable the whole time. So lesson. If I, hmm, I think, so we already knew, I think I said it very, like, an hour and a half ago, that the solver was going to mutate the matrix. So why are these matrices not marked as mutable? Right? Because they need to be mutable in the code that's passing it to the solver. Right? If you have something immutable, you can't hand it off to something else that thinks it's mutable. Like you can't, you know, have one hand do the dirty work for the other hands. Or one hand can't hand the work off to another hand to do the dirty work. Right? That's what Rust is protecting us from. But I I if I would have started with ensuring that the tests reflected what we actually wanted reality to be, then um, some confusion could have been avoided. Yeah, okay. How do I... Well, start with this. Can we do that? Okay, that is allowed. Problem left. All right. All right, and now everything's wrong. <laughs> uh, okay. Cannot borrow matrix as mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Uh, One twelve. Okay. Can we do that now? No rules expected, the token matrix. No rules, okay. So how am I supposed to declare this as a mutable value? Hmm? I can't? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I, I can't, right? So let's see. Uh, let mute matrix equals uh, clone. Line 59. Nope. Consider changing this to be mutable. Uh, line 59. I did that. Uh, unless it's talking about something in the library. Um, Maybe if I just do this in each of these functions, I'll actually be able to see what's going on. I think because it's inside of this macro. Uh, there we go. Okay, I just need to update them all. All right, so uh, let's run the tests. So this might actually make all the tests pass now. Should be really good from a Time to move on to web app work stuff. Perspective. All right, 
Five failed. Great. Begin panic. Quick check, quick check, tester, quick check. Solve. Oh, right, 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 right. So the thing that we've not done yet. So if it's not square, we squareify it. Um, the problem with doing it this way is, uh, no, it's, it's, it's manageable. So let's say, uh, let, uh, stars, extra stars equals this. Remove the extra stars from the result. Uh, and then return that. And then I can remove the to-do that I put down here. It's not applicable, right? So we need to, when we add, I'll look at the actual code this is generated in a second. But when we add these extra um, rows or columns and create this new matrix, in the result, those the edges to those extra rows or columns the extra rows or columns are going to be added and so in the result we need to remove those now does this do that so it takes the the result of calling the solver on the square matrix uh, extra stars it converts it in an iterator and then it filters um, and we do have the original number of rows and columns so we take only things where row is less than the number of rows and column is less than the number of columns, right? So any extra edges are those additional columns added to the right or to the bottom. So I think this condition looks good. And so we filter to only take the things that were in our original matrix and we collect them into stars and we return stars. Now we just return this result instead same thing let's say edges okay and then uh, let's run the test again and maybe this time all the tests will pass one failed interesting Assertion left equals right failed. Zero, 10. So this was huh, in the solve three by three case. Left, right, zero and 10. Um, I'm confused. Which test failed? Uh, issue six, okay. So one of the past issues that was reported, we said the cost should be 10. And we got a cost of zero. That is uh, impossible. For the cost to be zero. Um, interesting too, so this is a, thank you for auto formatting in a way that is not helpful. I miss prettier. Anyway, um, so why? Because this is a square matrix, right? It's a five by five matrix. So none of the code that we just implemented should occur, right? So let's look at issue six. Run just that test. Running one test. 
So this was the result, and it had a zero, zero. So there's something about the filter, wait. I'm confused. I'm really confused because this this test shouldn't hit any of the behavior that we just added. So there shouldn't be anything done here. Like if I just comment this out, save that, and then run this test, should still fail because that, good. <laughs> because the matrix is square. Um, so, what have I broken? And when did I break it? Uh, right, so. The issue is that we are mutating the matrix. <laughs> We're mutating the matrix, so we can no longer use the test matrix um, to retrieve the original values. So what we need to do instead is maybe just clone into a mutable, uh, there we go. So we're gonna give a copy of the test matrix to, uh, to here. So guess what? All of these let mute test clones. So if you let te or test matrix can can go back to that way, and instead we're going to clone it. That way we are not going to corrupt the original value. Uh, these are fine anyway because we had cloned the matrices. I, I really want this to be done soon. <laughs> I need to go uh, get some water. But let's see here. So if I just run all the tests, can we have working tests again? Yes, all tests pass, we're done. Uh, oh, let's check the um, benchmark. So let's just clone the matrix at mute. There we go. Cool. So what did we change? Um, some details about the interface changed again. We got rid of this transpose thing. Instead of trying to make um, the matrix be rectangular in a particular way, we're just going to turn it into a square matrix and then clean up the result embedding another call back into the whole thing into uh, the solver once we have the square matrix um, and then the algorithm proceeds the same way um, did I interesting is that what I ended up doing to make that work no, we can just do this, right? Okay. How did that, how did that change? Anyway, uh, let's make sure that I didn't just break the tests. Run all the tests again. I don't know why changing that would have broke, you know, broken tests, but uh, it's fine. All right, and then, um, so now we already have a mutable reference, so we're passing that in. Um, we are not cleaning, we're not untransposing things because that's not a thing we have to do there. And then here, we're not returning the matrix back anymore. There's no reason to do that with the way reduced edges is being used. Um, probably the adjust weights one, we could do the same thing as well if we wanted to. Oh, 
Oh, I see. We don't we don't specify a return type. And I guess that means that for this, we could just leave off the return type here as well. Uh, alrighty. So fix the problems. Uh, identify. And I'm not gonna go into more depth than that because the other commit messages and the pull request has all of those details. So last thing before the break, I'll go back here, check the box. Uh, say it's ready for review. Um, I don't currently require review because there's no other regular contributors to this library. So I'm just gonna click auto merge. Uh, and once the build passes, this will happen. Um, there's one more thing. So this all this this issue should get closed because I tagged it in the uh, PR. Let's um, create GitHub action to auto release to um, crates. Is it crates.io? Nope. Also, crates. Yeah. So a future stream will cover doing some GitHub action stuff, I guess. And maybe we can look at um, um, wrappers. Some other stuff for, for this, this crate. Um, ooh. Add new build status in readme. So some odds and ends, and maybe some other stuff will be identified, hopefully not, uh, in the interim. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick break for just a few minutes so I can go get some water and uh, just stretch my legs because I've been sitting here for like two hours so, uh, when I come back, uh, we're going to do some web app dev on uh, this little calorie ca counting app called uh, Daily Jewel. So, be back in just a few. <laughs> 